And yo, this SV Twist the Hood Blogger. Y'all already know how I carry it. Man, shout out to everybody that been rocking with the content. I really appreciate y'all, man. A thousand and ten percent. Keep showing that love, bro. Hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, come join the family. Hit that sub button. If you already been a part of the family, once again, I appreciate y'all. But don't forget to hit that like button, man, and help with the channel algorithm and all of that. That's all I ask, man, is for a little like, bro. It take a second. I'm trying to hold these legends down from this city, you know, and I'm going to keep carrying it, man. You know, some people love it. Some people like it. Some don't understand and some might hate it. But I'm going to stand on my two regardless, bro. This SV Twist, the hood blogger, but let's get straight into it. Demetrius L. Green, born January 19th, 1995. He was from the Nice Town part of the city. For those of y'all that don't know, Nice Town is right in between the area part of this section where we have legends like Gilly and you know, Wallow. You got Hollow Man, you got. Ab and you know what I'm saying a lot of people from OBH that's from you know that area area Ab is like you know it's like definitely a staple in the city where people from all over the world they they, they cut through there because you know it's a bunch of like food places like you got the whites you got Max's and you know the clock bar and all of that so with it being the hood is you know still a very popular area where people from the whole city cut through and it's also between you know the high low in between germantown where nice town consists of like winger hawking and all that stuff now as far as nice town you got celebrities like young chris you're saying spado people like that 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 came through them stomping grounds at nice town although they call it nice town you know, it's nothing nice about it. It's the trenches. You know, what can I say? But, you know, uh, Michi was definitely from Nice Town. And on his upcoming of being a comedian, as he began to win, he realized, you know, you got to get up out that city, bro. And for those of y'all that might not know who Michi Ho is, he was an upcoming Instagram comedian that had a lot of deals on the table at the time of you know of him losing his life he would go into random stores his name was mr thousand jobs because he was known for going in places like foot locker you know random restaurants whether it was Popeyes, he did like the post office skits and he would go behind them counters at restaurants and go on job sites and act as though he was an employee from these places but he was sent from another branch you know what i'm saying so for instance if he was let's say going up to kfc back brought and champ loss back there near the district he would go in there and just start cooking and then when managers question him he would be like you know what i you know they sent me from you know, the, the KFC from down north, you know what I mean? From off of Broad Street. My manager told me to come over here. And, you know, he didn't have no cares as far as going in there. And, you know, he was never shy or nothing as far as with doing his skits. And he was pretty much on the uprising, bro. Like, he was taking off. And a lot of people loved him, bro. A lot of people loved him, man. He, you know, he just... He just had the gift of the gab and you know as he's you know rising up he eventually had moved he moved out of the state and if i'm not mistaken he had lived out california you know once he had got his bread right and if that's you know if that's not accurate please drop it in the comment you know i apologize if if, if i got where he moved that wrong but from my understanding, he had moved out California and you know, things was working out for him, but on top of the love he was getting, it was a few hate, hateful situations that took place. Now, the first one was, you know, that, that I seen on the internet was actually, it was a guy and this, this guy, like, you know, he was on, he came on Michi Instagram 
you know, he was talking heavy. I don't know what transpired from it, but he was talking heavy. You know, and basically, bro was on here, you know what I'm saying, talking like this. I smack your head now, I'm all the way in the back. You want medication? You don't got no hairline. Get a hairline. Yeah, you look like Batman. The Batman symbol in the middle of your head. Batman. What you say? What you say? Get out of here. Know what I said, Batman? Where robbing at? Bro, you need your medicine? I got some. I punch in your face and make your. I punch in your eye and make your whole face fall up, nigga. Like, come on, man. Get, get me off the line with that young boy, man. Like. <laughs> I'm gonna wind up, I'm gonna wind up, I'm gonna wind up, I'm gonna wind up, catch him. You don't even know him. I don't give a fuck about where you at. It ain't hard to find. And on top of him going viral from off of his videos, one thing that played a major role in his career and drew a lot of attention to him was him and his dealings with Sunday Carter. Now, for those of y'all that don't know who she is, Sunday Carter was, I believe, um, not only a part of Love and Hip Hop, but for those of y'all that's from Philly and from the Tri-State, we know that Sunday Carter played Beanie Siegel Girl on state property. And that was me, basically. That's the knowledge I had of her. Once I found out who he was dealing with, the first thing I thought of was state property, because I don't... You know what I'm saying? I never watched none of them, them love and hip hops and all that. That's more of a show for women. You know what I'm saying? And I never really tuned into that. But, you know, um, she was known as Beanie Siegel's wife on state property. So it was an altercation that happened where things start going viral on the Internet. And, you know, they was basically he put the video out of Sunday Carter, you know, giving him fellatio and you know licking his gooch and all of that stuff you know and you know she was basically going there and you know dedicated to you know pleasing that man and she had got upset that the video had got leaked out which i don't know if you know obviously she probably didn't know she was getting recorded but regardless of the fact we have to remember that Michi was only 25 years old at the time when this happened. Sunday Sunday Carter was like 45, bro, 46. So she was claiming that something was slipped inside of her drink by Michi and that she wasn't in the right state of mind. With that being said, it's like this, bro. Michi had showed proof that they were in contact that she was telling him to pull up. So my whole thing is this. You telling this this young man to pull up at the age that you are. I don't care what you had. Whether you, you know what I'm saying, you was on shrooms, whether you was drinking, whatever it was. Or you, whether someone slipped something in your drink. When you called that young man to come be in your presence. You had some type of liking to him. You was attracted to him in some shape or form. So she claimed that, you know, she wasn't in the right state of mind. She was trying to say Michi gave her gave her something. And then these situations had took place. Now, Michi had gave out proof that she had invited him to a party. Now, the party that he had went to, he said when she got there, she was already drunk. Like she was drunk and tore up and you know, she was originally telling him, like, we need to sit down, you know, let's talk business. Like, I got opportunities for you. So Michi said that when he got there, she was already drunk. I'm chilling, man. All right. So, you know, I, you know, I got a few questions for you, man. The people, the people want to know, bro. I, I heard you did radio yesterday. So I heard you've been making the rounds and you've been telling your story and everything like that. Yes, sir. So let's first let's first get the people. What exactly do you do, Meech? I do like job prints. I started a thing like last year, like thousand jobs. So I go to like people jobs, like I work there, but I really don't work there. So I like prank, okay. I prank people. So you so you basically do skits and stuff. So you go down there, you do like you act like you working for Dunkin' Donuts and shit like that. I saw you. Yeah. Okay. So how long have you been doing that? 
Like last, I see you. after like the the week of last year, like game the after the finals last year. So after the finals so last year, year. So, so about a so year like, now, you got a hundred some thousand followers, so you popping out here. You doing no, your I'm thing. Just, no, it's just like I'm genuine and everything. I don't try to get a laugh and just just, just be funny and people just show me love and support. So, and my followers just go okay. up from there. So. So that's so that's so that's how this thing. So how did you and Sunday connect? Because you do what you do, and you know I don't know what Sunday's doing at this moment, but I'm sure she got a lot of shit going on. But how did y'all connect? Well, uh, I didn't even know she knew me, but so randomly I was on a live. I was on a live, and um, what the fuck? I was on a live. I guess her daughter be telling me about her, be telling her, telling her about my videos. That's so happy. Okay. Um, so happy. I just click on her live, and she just like when I put the emoji eyes, and I just comment on her live, and I put the emoji eyes, and she was like, um, she like, oh my god, oh. how you doing, Michi? I'm big fan of you. Come link up with me. I got a party. I got a party um, this Saturday at Galaxy Live, and she told me. Slide through, we can have a sit down. So mind you, Saturday night came. I went down there and she all drunk and shit like that. Okay. So, I might know. I can't talk to you drunk. You feel me? Right. Cause you trying to cause you trying to handle business. Who know what happened? She was drunk and he was like, you know, we can't really talk business while while you drunk. You know, it don't make no sense. Like I, you know, I holler at you when you sober up. So Michi was, you know, saying that he had faded. You did what I'm saying, and, and then she was texting him and, and telling him that you know pull up and stuff like that, and that she was in her pajamas and everything and all of that. And you know he he pulled up. He had pulled up. They had did what they did, and eventually the situation had got exposed. So after everything got exposed. You know, um, Sunday had got upset and went live on her Instagram while she was at the police district and, you know, filed those R charges on her. I mean, excuse me, she filed them R charges on Michi. The thing about taking an L is that I would if I actually took one. The first to hold it up, like, damn, I took an L, you know, but come on. Anybody that knows me, knows me way better than that. So that's all I'm gonna say. And so since people wanna, you know, go live and whatnot, I'm not hiding. So I'm going live as well. And I'm going to take the proper procedures to do what it is that I need to do. I don't give a fuck what I did. I don't give a fuck if I was alert or not, just because you know, you're under the influence of whatever somebody gave you doesn't mean you got to be knocked out. How about you Google that part? Nobody got finesse. <laughs> Here's the thing. You don't need to get upset or, you know, slander people or whatever when... You know what the situation is, so here it is here. So, okay, you want to take it there? You want to go live and you want to post things and me licking at, sucking, well, giving fellatio <laughs> under the influence of whatever it was. That's great. However, um, I didn't consent to those videos being posted, so. Yes, yes, that's me. Okay. Sorry, guys, but going up to the police right now. Caught me around all you want. I'm here, yes. While she was going live, so they was pretty much going back and forth on different lives and interviews and addressing the situation. So while all this is getting stirred up, the average person from Philly couldn't even believe it because it's like, and also those fans of Love and Hip Hop couldn't believe it. And 
you know, it was just a shock and jump because it's like a lot of times when people say they did certain things with certain people, they don't actually have a video. So with him having the video and putting it out, it caused a lot of controversy through the internet. So at this time, he's already lit. You know, he's still doing his comedic stuff and things of that nature. But it was an event that took place in the city of Philly. So Michi pulls up to Philly. And after he leaves the event, he's driving down the bully. You know what I'm saying? Roosevelt Boulevard, which is, I want to say it's basically like an expressway that cut through a major part of the city. Like if you need to get to the northeast part of Philly, you take the bully only. It cut through north. You can get to West Philly. You dig what I'm saying? You can get to all of that from the bully. Because eventually, you know, for those of y'all that don't know, the boulevard eventually take you into 76 and you can get to West Philly, downtown South Philly. So it's like a, you know, it's like a major highway that cut through the city of Philly. So as he's coming back from wherever he coming from, he was, you know what I'm saying, accompanied by a, 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 also a DVD legend from the Philly, I mean from Philly Rico. You know what I'm saying? For those of y'all that know who Rico is, so they driving and they was in a, a black Altima. They stopped down around 5th and the Bully, around 5th and the Boulevard. I don't know if they, I think they was at a red light or they pulled over to the side. Whatever the case was, the car was stopped. And at the time of them being stopped, somebody comes up and starts shooting at the car. They start, so Michi was in the passenger seat. Rico was driving. The car stopped, person come up on foot and starts shooting from the passenger side. If y'all really look at it, this is similar to Tupac death. Along Roosevelt Boulevard late last night, killed a Philadelphia comedian with a loyal following on social media. Action News' Walter Perez is live in the Satellite Center with what we know so far as police try to figure out who shot him and why. A lot of reaction to this online, Walter. That's right, Jeanette. He was known as Michi and, as you mentioned, had a pretty impressive following right here in Philadelphia. Investigators say indications are at this point that Michi was targeted. What they're looking for now is a suspect and a motive in this case. His given name was Demetrius Green, but he was better known as Michi. The 25-year-old was shot and killed late last night while inside a vehicle traveling along Roosevelt Boulevard. According to witnesses, Michi was in the passenger side of the vehicle, which was stopped at a light near 5th Street in Olney, when someone approached the vehicle and simply opened fire. The driver then quickly sped away and slammed into a utility pole moments later. The victim was taken to Einstein Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead a short time later. Michi was a very popular sketch comedian here in Philadelphia, having recorded and posted a string of comedic videos online. Condolences have since been pouring in via social media, including messages from Questlove, Eagle Safety Will Parks, and rapper Meek Mill, who tweeted, they killed Michi, that's brazy. Meanwhile, several months ago, Michi was accused of drugging and then filming a sexual encounter with Sunday Carter, star of the TV series Basketball Wives. Accusations that Michi strongly denied. Now, we're told the driver of the car that was targeted was hospitalized with an arm injury, but at this point, it's unclear if he was able to give a statement to police. We'll keep you posted on that. Still, anyone with any further information about this case is asked to contact police. And what I mean by similar was like, I don't mean that trying to, you know, say Michi Ho was, you know, that type of celebrity where he was Pac status. I'm talking about the situation that happened with this shooting. So somebody come up on foot, they start shooting through the passenger seat to where Michi was sitting. You know, they hit Michi up and Rico also got hit in the arm. Rico pulls off and obviously, you know, lost consciousness or whatever. He ended up smacking into a pole. Rico ended up surviving and Michi Ho got pronounced dead. And when this happened, it had the city in the uproar because Michiho was basically, he was out the way, bro. He only came to Philly for this certain event. And for that time that he, that little bit of time that he came back to Philly, this had took place. And you know, it, it, it was crazy, bro, because 
even with that happening, a big salute to Michiho mom and father. His mom is one of the, you know, strongest people I ever seen because off the rip, she not only, you know, um, spoke on, you know, who Michi was to the community, but she also spoke on whoever took his life. She had automatically forgave that person. And to this day, nobody has ever been arrested for it, but she forgave the person and she's someone that's real big on the community where she looks at everybody from the city as her children. So um, her and his father, they stood in strong spirit as they did, you know, um, where I can't think of the name of it, but you know, when they, when they released the balloons and all of that, man. So, you know, it, it, it was very, you know, a very, very unfortunate situation, man. He was only 25. When we listen to other outsiders that's not from Philly, one of the things they always say is, bro, y'all Philly guys always beefing with each other, man. And it, it's like that. It, it, it's very unfortunate, bro. You dig what I'm saying? Even for, you know, somebody like me that's a YouTuber that, you know, I, I was in the streets. I'm on my family man type time right now, but I still got to move accordingly to the streets when I step out that door. You dig what I'm saying? You never know how somebody feel about your situation. It's like you damn near got to be ready to crash out any given time, you know, being from our city, because when they say the love over power to hate, that's not true because you can have 98% of love and that 2% don't like you, that don't like you, that 2% will be the ones that are in everything, bro, they're in everything. And for what? You dig what I'm saying? Me, she wasn't active in the streets or nothing. You know what I'm saying? He was a he was a comedian and just like y'all saw on that live, you know what I'm saying, which you know I seen somebody on there, you know, and he, he was basically like, you know, he was talking heavy, bro. But it's like, you know, what was you even talking heavy for? You know, cause me, she don't even give out that type of energy unless we didn't see the full live. I don't know if Michi said something that the, the guy felt disrespected about, but you know, in our city, if somebody don't like you or if it's any type of slight disrespect or somebody don't like what you're doing, it's to the point where if they see you, you know, they not gonna waste no time. But one thing that I, I, I didn't understand about when, you know, um, Michi got his life taken and Rico got hit was I felt as though they should have been riding in something tenant. You got two big names that's riding around in the city. You know, Fishbowl. Everybody know Rico from rapping. You know, back Magic and Still days, the DVD days. You know what I'm saying? With, with Hattie and all of them. They already, you know what I'm saying? People knew who Rico was and people knew who Michi was for the newer generation from you know the, the Instagram skits and stuff like that. So, you know, they was riding around fishbowl to the point where when you stop, a person can look like, oh, that's him right there. It just, it's, it's just crazy how it happened, man. But once again, it was another life taken, another talent loss. Um, condolences to Michi family and friends. You know, it was a very unfortunate situation. But a story that we can't forget about, man. But this SV Twist, the hood blogger, y'all already know how I carry it, man. Shout out to everybody that been rocking.